If you're like me, you live in an eternal hellscape of constant fear and sorrow. If not because of the news, at least because of the new season of Love Island. Kissing strangers during a pandemic while having to live on the roof of a Vegas hotel is a full nightmare. As bad as things are, it makes sense that people are looking for comfort wherever they can find it, including from miracle products that promise to make them feel better and give them hope. But what can seem like innocuous woo, from charging your crystals in the moonlight to lighting a candle to ward off Mondays, can quickly devolve into pseudoscience that at best is a waste of money and at worst is dangerous. In fact, anti-science behavior is on the rise, something that has directly undermined America's healthcare response to COVID-19. And women, in particular, are relentlessly upon by companies that work to exploit their insecurities while making impossible claims. It's pseudoscience, and we can't talk about it without first addressing my favorite offender, Goop. With the Goop juggernaut valued at $250 million, all this publicity is probably part of the plan. Paltrow in the role of leader, she's focused on building a Goop empire. And in the largely unregulated wellness industry, the Goop Lab may bring her largest audience yet. It's not that we're opposed to conventional medicine. We just also are very interested in alternative medicine. I've always been that person who um, has sort of introduced the culture or the media to things that people think are weird. Is the ire and flack worth it to you? Oh yeah, of course. Gwyneth, it is not worth it. I say that as someone who once got a comment online about my dump truck ass, and that was a compliment. Goop sells products that are perfect for the woman who has everything but the weirdest shit in the world. Things like vitamins that claim to help someone function at an intense pace, rip off Lisa Frank stickers that boost cell turnover, psychic vampire repellent, and a vibrator that is also a necklace finished in 24 karat gold. It's also a wine opener, so be real careful what setting it's on when you use it. Goop recommends questionable spa treatments like vaginal steaming, which involves sitting over a bowl of boiling hot water infused with herbs to cleanse and freshen the vagina. If that sounds dangerous and unnecessary, it's because it is. One woman received second degree burns after attempting to steam her vagina. Even weirder, those burns were on her face. Of course, none of that is gonna stop Goop. They still sell products and treatments that claim to fix various medical issues, even as they're called out for fraud. The wellness empire has agreed to pay $145,000 for allegedly promoting what critics say are unscientific claims. One product mentioned in the suit, the provocative jade and rose quartz egg products, which marketed themselves to women as a way to balance their hormones and increase bladder control. Some women even sleep with that jade egg in their spunk huts, which can put a person at risk for bacterial vaginosis or toxic shock syndrome. It's truly the worst thing Paltrow has endorsed putting inside your vagina since Chris Martin. And it's not just Goop. The $4 trillion global wellness industry, which largely targets women, has run afoul of the FDA by promising claims they can't possibly deliver. As long as a product doesn't claim to mitigate, treat, or cure anything, companies don't have to prove it actually does what it's advertising. Which is why my own company had to recall our face cream that promised to cure death, kill God, and let you live forever. It will only kill God. And because there's no legal definition for terms such as clean or natural, those words can mean whatever the f companies want them to. Clark's Botanical Skin Care has clean, natural ingredients, all backed by science. CoverGirl Clean Fresh Skin Milk. Mmm. In Canada, we buy our skin milk in bags. People haven't been this obsessed with the word clean since they debuted the new sexy Mr. Clean. <laughs> Mama's gonna need two mops when I see that man. In one survey, 90% of consumers believed that natural or naturally derived beauty ingredients were better for them, but chemicals aren't inherently bad for you. Too much of anything can be toxic for your body. It's like how one Arby's jalapeno roast beef slider is a tasty meal, but 20 will cause your baby to come out wrong. Which leads us to the biggest, scariest buzzword in wellness and beauty, toxins. This is the hot stuff for all the ingredients now. Everybody wants charcoal. What does it, what does it do? It acts like a sponge in our body, pulling toxins out. A foot bath that some spas claim can actually remove toxins from your body. It's going to help draw toxins out of your feet. 
The word toxins has been consistently misused by the wellness industry for decades, capitalizing on long-held beliefs that women's bodies are unclean. But while detoxing is a legitimate medical procedure that rids the body of dangerous levels of alcohol, drugs, or poisons, detoxing for wellness isn't, i.e. juice cleanses, colonics, and activated charcoal. That's especially true if you do activated charcoal the way I do, by eating a whole briquette. Products that target women using shitty science are costly, ineffective, and most worryingly can put their lives in danger. Sadly, it makes sense that women would be open to alternative wellness. Women face higher chances of misdiagnoses, have been left out of medical research, and frequently report that doctors take their pain less seriously. The infinitely long marginalization of women in medicine has made it easier for a lot of us to believe in medical conspiracy theories like bras causing breast cancer, vaccines causing autism, or that putting a garlic clove in your vagina will stop yeast infections. It won't. It'll just stop vampires from going to third base. Mistrust in science in general is the reason so many people believe masks cause coronavirus and nearly 30% of Americans believe coronavirus was created in a lab. This is a terrible time to consciously uncouple from science. Like most parts of society, the medical community has a lot of work to do when it comes to serving people who are not white men, but it is not okay for companies to take advantage of people looking for help. Just like it was not okay for Barnes & Noble to recommend Sean Penn's novel, Bob Honey, who just do stuff when I asked for a romantic summer read. It wasn't, and it turned out he didn't just do much. Two stars out of five. If you liked this video, hit subscribe and let me know in the comments below. And if you didn't like this video, I'm sure you've already left a comment. Thank you so much.